Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rinse at a time, quickly becoming one of our favorite video series of the weekend. We are once again talking with the man, myth, the legend, Mr. Dan Bird. How you doing, sir? Doing well. Had a good week. Yeah, you bet you did. I remember again, folks. Dan has his own playlist on this channel. We talk every Sunday at ten o'clock Pacific about the market. Uh, last week, uh, we talked about this week being very important. Right, we had lots of marking moving economic data, lots of market moving company earnings. It was all this big stuff. And last week, you're like, Michael, take it easy. There's this chart. There's this little gray area we may fill might fill in. You know, are we going to go down or up? Who knows. Uh, it was clear from your conversations, my words, not yours, that you thought the likelihood of us going up were better than not. Not a certainty by any means, just. Yeah, you know, no, you know. it's never, never a certainty, but never a certainty. But that's kind of probabilities were weighted towards. Yeah. It, and that's what you shared. And I was like, I, I got to tell you. And I think I think actually I think somebody commented last week. You guys have to be friends because you're ju you're laughing at is this or that. I'm like, yeah, we're pretty good. We've known each other a couple of decades. Right. Um, so, yeah, I didn't I didn't see it happening. I thought the economic data would come in as expected or right. worse. Yeah. And I saw earnings generally negative, which I think also came in generally speaking, but yet the market is up. And more importantly, the fed gave us what I thought they should. And the freaking 10 year note is down. 30 year mortgages are down and the stocks went up 4%. Powell has got to be kicking himself for his dovish comments. At the end of the Fed meeting, I mean, what a well, his comment! His comments were all over the board. You could easily pick dovish comments out of that, but you could also pick hawkish comments out of it. Well, if here you want, you yeah, want he, to. I think he, I think he wanted to come in as a hawk, but a couple of his comments were a big, fat, fluffy dove, and I think that's yeah. What one of the one of his comments that he did very quickly, and I was wondering if you caught it. Mm -hmm. He said, "Depending on the data, we're going to be data driven." I'm not going to say what we're going to do next mm -hmm. next time. We will be data driven. Mm -hmm. Depending on the data, we could pause. Well, I didn't hear him say pause. He I heard said him, pause. I did. I did not hear the word pause. I've actually watched it twice. I did hear him say that he basically acknowledged the reality that 75 basis point jumps aren't going to continue. But that's that's a logical statement. Of course, they can't continue forever. But. Yeah, I actually didn't hear pause. I have to go back and watch so, that. Again. So you remember what I said last week? <clears throat> I've actually said it a few times. I said after this one, the next meeting in September mm -hmm. will either be 25 or nothing. Yeah, you have. And I have come out saying it'll be 50 or 75. This is, again, where we, we just disagree. And that's awesome. I like disagreement. It's cool. It's healthy disagreement, respectful disagreement. Yeah, so you... you we have two. We have two. You could be right. Obviously, you could be right. There is no certainties, only probabilities. There's two months of economic data coming, and to your point, I think basically what you're saying is bad news is going to equal good news, where we'll have bad economic news. We have good, and that will be good economic or good reason for Powell to pause, or go to zero, or stop raising. That's what you're saying. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna show you a chart here in a minute. Okay. Um, so what did you think about, before you bring up any of your charts, sure. uh, when you sat back Friday after the close and you went back at a pretty, it was a, it was a week full of stuff. What, what were you thinking about when you got to the end of the week? I was thinking we are dangerously close to a resistance level. Ah, on the upside. <clears throat> on the upside. Okay. I'll, I'll explain all of that and. And how, what, I, what, I, what I hope to see happen, but okay. I'll and then all that. one one last question before you get up the charts: How active were you last week? Were you trading in and out of stuff all week, or just buying? Uh, no, I I was I was actually in some of the things that I'd been in previously, which were mostly chip stocks. Yep. Okay. Nvidia, AOSL, which I talked about the um, repairing the, a trade. Yep. Yeah, repairing the trade, which is. I think if you remember repairing the trade, I started at 35 and it dropped to 29 mm -hmm. and ended the week at 42. <laughs> that's not, that's not bad. And so all of those went up. <clears throat> so those, those were great. So um, were those trades or in trades or investments? Just not the, those are, those are trades for now. Okay. I'm going to have to make that decision on Monday Okay. of whether I stay in them <clears throat> because I think we're probably going down soon. Okay. Next couple of weeks. 
And whether I stay in them or I let them go down and I buy more, which okay. which, which is another strategy. I might okay. I might just buy more when they drop. I might keep what I have and drop, buy more because so I only this, only half half invested in each of those. Got it. Because again, you're doing your risk management. These are right. starting out as trades in and out very quick. That may come long term investments when you buy the other half of your position. It's kind yeah. of what you're saying. Okay. All right. Like I like, like AM, AMD. I bought a few months ago, <clears throat> and I'm still and, in that one. And AMD announces next week if I remember my yeah. list. Okay. Yeah. In the second uh, video, we'll talk. We'll look at some individual stocks. Yeah. So what what do you got for us last week? Bring up your charts. Um, it, it was, it's funny how all the economic data went the direction I thought it would or worse, right? I expected GDP for Q2 to be 0.1 positive. It came in exactly negative. what I'm going to talk about here. Okay. All right. Um, let me, let me show my newsletter first. Yes, please. Have you read it? I have not. No, I've been busy this week. Yeah. I kind of got that impression based on the way you were talking. Yeah, I, I will. That's what this afternoon's for. Okay, this is uh, this is an excerpt from the newsletter. Um, lots of cartoons. I had a lot of choices of cartoons this week. Interestingly, <laughs> <clears throat> a lot of recession cartoons, a lot of inflation cartoons. Yeah, things like that. But do you identify as a recession? That is yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. So I so I've been in some very heated conversations on LinkedIn. Oh yeah. With people that are convinced that the um, administration is changing the definition of recession yeah i i have, I have some heated discussions on that too so yeah. try to make to try to make themselves look good and i keep i keep telling people it's not it is not a recession no q1 and q2 is not a recession it's just we not. are not in a recession and and nobody will believe it and they're well and, i would be very clear on that i actually am making a very very early call that the q q it will be q3 will be the start of a recession so what i'm saying is i think we've just started a recession that's obviously a very, 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 very early call, but that's my belief. Q3 will be negative and be. Uh, yeah. So one of the, one of the things I use to um, explain that mm -hmm. is this chart here, which is the unemployment rate mm -hmm. overlaid with the in previous recessions. Yep. And these, these five arrows is the lowest that it's been, including this one, actually there should be six arrows, but just lowest that it's been in 70 years. Yeah. This chart goes back to before 1950. Mm. So more, more than 70 years. All right. And what you should notice is that when the inflation rate is at its lowest, mm -hmm. it's usually three to six months before the recession. Correct. Not during the recession. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a lagging indicator. Right? It's a lagging indicator. Yeah. You can't call a recession when you're adding 400,000 jobs a month. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, the first half added 2.6 million jobs. It's not going to be a recession, folks. Right. It's just not. It's just, yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and, and the other thing that drives me nuts <laughs> is it doesn't freaking matter. The economy is shrinking. It doesn't matter. It, it, it Whether or not it's called a recession or a boom, who the hell cares? It's, well, it's, it's irrelevant. People that want to be political care. Yeah, which is not my thing. I don't care. Right. Doesn't matter. Um, okay. So the other the other thing, and this is I'm actually gonna bring up my newsletter, the actual okay. newsletter. The other thing that's at the very end, other than the hurricane chart, this is for all my friends in Florida. Oh no. We are here. August first, September. There's there's our hurricane season oh. coming up. Joy. But Right here, this is Jim Cramer. When the Fed gets out of the way, you have a real window and you've got to jump through it. When a recession comes, the Fed has the good sense to stop raising rates. And that pause means you've got to buy stocks. Mm -hmm. All right? Yep. But that is incorrect. When the Fed pauses, historically, the recession is beginning, not ending. Yeah, I would I would argue when the Fed, I, mean, <clears throat> I think it's kind of splitting hairs, but I think when a Fed pauses, you're in a recession. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're in it, not be. Yeah, you're that's in the it. reason they. That's the reason they will pause. Exactly. <laughs> I said. Um, I think. I think I said somewhere else in this newsletter that. Uh, I think they're going to pause in September. They're going to be more worried about recession, and by the end of the year, the the conversation will be about deflation, not inflation. Yeah, I mean, you and <clears throat> Kathy Wood. I mean, that's Kathy Wood's talk track minus a month or two. Um, right. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that is def. I am seeing... Um, all right, I have another Wall Street guy on on Mondays, Taylor. Both of you um, are very, very uh, stock market uh, experienced, literate, focused. 90% of the people that have that background are calling exactly what you've just said. By the end of the year, uh, we're going to be worried about deflation. Right. And I, I just don't see it. I yeah. don't see well, it. <clears throat> here are the things to watch for. <clears throat> so this is what I said in my newsletter. Yep. Last week, I showed the market trend for August going back 21 years. I showed a general downtrend the first half of the month. Yep. That's, my, that's why I think we're going to, because we're so close to a, a resistance level, which I'll show in a minute. Okay. Um, we're going to trend down. Okay. Then things pick up after op op options expiration on 819. Here are a few okay. things to watch in the coming weeks that may be catalyst for a big market rally. Okay. If the CPI numbers start to show lower inflation. So let me talk about that. So or, or ask you about that. What when you say lower, I mean what a nine? Because that would be technically lower than nine one. Or, or do you mean meaningfully lower? Well, I, I mean lower. So a nine would be a seen as a good thing. Nine will be nine will be a it was nine point one last time. Correct. So nine isn't much, but but it is lower. Okay. So basically, peak inflation is what you're calling. Peak inflation. Okay. What I've said before is one data point doesn't make a trend. No, no, totally good. I if just you, wanted to make sure. Nine, if we get nine and then eight point five, then you do have a trend. Yeah. No, I agree. Okay. And both of those are before the next Fed meeting. No, but see, I, I not to split hairs, but th this is I want to make sure I'm I'm getting this so. What you're saying is at some point we have to see a meaningful drop. You just went from nine to eight, five. That would no. be a meaningful drop in a month. I'm, no, I'm not saying that. Okay. That's why I'm asking. So if it went like this, nine, one, nine, eight, nine, eight, 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 seven, that's, that's peak inflation, but is that yes. good enough? Yes. In okay. fact, if it, if it goes nine, eight, nine. Yep. Nine one was the last one. Nine Correct. one was the last one. Correct. If it goes nine, and then eight, nine. Okay. That will be enough. Okay. All right. That's what I wanted to ask. These, okay. So these are the things to watch in the next few. Remember, those two will be before the next Fed meeting. Correct. Correct. All right. CPI numbers start to show lower inflation. And Number again, two. nine, eight, nine. That's the trend. Three points, nine, one, nine, eight, nine. Whatever it is. Whatever it I is. Think, I got you. I okay. think it's going to be much more meaningful than that. <clears throat> but okay. any trend, any trend lower will be enough. Okay. I just wanted to ask. And I'm going to, the chart I wanted to bring up in the very beginning, this is all leading up to it. And ah, this sorry. is all going to, you know, kind of explain that. Number two, if the market breaks out of the current congestion area, 4150 to 4200, especially with an inverse head and shoulders. Oh. And I'll show, I'll show what that means in a minute. Okay. And number three, if the dollar starts to roll over and weaken. Yeah. That's something people have to watch uh, right now. You know, dollar is strong, euro parity, all of that. But you're right. If the Fed pauses uh, and other central banks continue to raise because they're behind, the dollar will weaken and that will be that will help stocks, earnings per share, multinationals yeah. specifically. I actually, I actually think the dollar will weaken before that. But really, we'll, oh, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll look at the dollar here in a minute. OK, so then I said any one of these may be enough. But if all three happen, then we are headed much higher. Wow. Market will not wait for anyone. Yeah. Here's okay. the here's the dollar chart. This is again, I'm still in my newsletter. So yep. Yeah. People need to get this. It. Yep. This is the dollar chart right here. Yeah. This this part up here is is momentum. Think of this as momentum. Okay. Momentum is still climbing. Okay. Right. Hasn't really rolled over yet. Yeah. There's a little bit of a negative divergence down here, but it not really much. hasn't rolled over yet. Yep. It's come back down to the um eight day moving average, but it hasn't really broken it. I mean, that's pretty, that's been pretty good support all the way up. Yeah. 21 day has been really solid support. Yeah. All the way up. So what I said is if it gets below 103, mm. it breaks this 21 day support. Okay. Then it's going down. Here's the rate of change. Okay. Right. Yep. <laughs> Starting that's to good. roll over some. Yeah. It's actually a negative divergence right there. Yeah. This is gold, which is usually inverse to the dollar. Yeah, I watched gold just last week. It went up last week. Yeah. I think gold is telling us the dollar is headed down. Really? And then this is the this is the 10 year treasury. Yeah, go figure the 10 year treasury. The 10 year treasury is screaming what you're calling for. It just is. Yeah. We'll look I at that in a minute. It's wild. We'll look at that in a second. But well, um yeah. so here, here's my newsletter if anybody wants it. It's free. 
breakpoint, just send me an email to breakpointtrading at gmail.com. And I'll add you to the list. I'll send this past week's newsletter so you can have that. And um, if you ever want to be taken off, just let me know and I'll just take you off. There no you big go. Deal. So here's what here's the one that I wanted to show and remind everyone about. I've showed this before. <clears throat> I just put it on LinkedIn again, but it's always important to keep reminding people of this. So the red line is the market, the stock market. The blue line is the economy. I had uh, a conversation with uh, someone that has been, I think they were with, um, it's one of the big banks in Boston. Okay. And he said, yeah, I'm looking at, uh, you know, Verizon said that their delinquency rates starting to rise and credit card companies said that people oh. are, are, are getting more late with their credit cards. And yep. those, those were the justifications he was giving me. I said, yeah, okay, I, I get that. Yep. And all that will probably lead to a recession. Mm -hmm. But that's the economy. Right. I'm looking at the stock market. Yeah. They're different. They are two different things. Very different. And that's why, that's why I am. Whole... When, you, when you hear people on CNBC and when you read all this stuff, when they talk about the economy, mm -hmm. remember the market is six to nine months ahead of the economy. And you have just told everybody why I'm a horrible stock market investor. I haven't bought a stock in 15 years. Because yeah. I am focused on the blue. It's where I live day to day. Right. And it's why I why I'm horrible at it. Right. So I like it. So I, I marked here where I think we are right now. So let me just summarize that. So the the stock market, to your point, you think is in the process of bottoming, trending Correct. up, but the, right. the economy, what I study every day, still going down. Still going down and not in a recession yet. Yeah. I got I would do might be I, might be early recession, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. But not a full recession yet. I would agree. All right. Yeah, I agree. So remember, this is where we are in the stock market. Mm -hmm. By the time we are in a full recession, the stock market is already halfway back to the top. Mm. Okay. That's why I said the market will not wait for anyone. Mm, I like it. Okay. You have to you have to you have to remember this. Keep this in mind. And anytime you hear on the news, the media, the media sells fear because that's what makes people click on links and watch mm -hmm. their watch their uh, commercials. Mm -hmm. So they will try to sell fear whenever they're they're talking about things that relate to the economy. Yep. Like you know, people are not making their credit card payments, and Verizon phone is you know they're late on their payments on their phone. That's the economy. That's not the stock market. Correct. That that's. That's putting us over here, right where we should be, the economy mm -hmm. going down. Yeah. Well, the stock market's going up. So remember this. Keep this in mind. Thank you. <clears throat> now. This is this is why people need to get your newsletter. It's just some great reminders. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, next week, I'm going to be talking about this, this topic right here. Awesome. That and my favorite topic, which is the secular bull market. Yeah. It's looking like a yeah. solid call. Which we are still in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So let's go look at some of the charts now. All right, here's the, I showed this one in the past. Mm -hmm. This is the secular bull market. This is starting from 2009, right? Yep. At the yep. bottom of the last recession, our big recession. We had a brief one in yeah. for COVID, but it wasn't didn't last long. <clears throat> and what you'll notice is the market has just been generally headed up. Mm -hmm. It's staying within this channel. We broke out of it a little bit up here, which is actually, you know, that's kind of what told us the market was overdone when we got out above the channel. Right. But every time it's come back, you'll notice where it comes back to. Yep. This is 2010. This is 2011. This is 16. This is 18. COVID went through it. Yeah. It went down to the bottom of the channel. But every other time it's come back to the, back to the midpoint. Mm. And look where we are right now. Yeah. Okay. In fact, I drew this circle in here before we even kind of hit it and started back up again. I drew this circle. Yeah. All right. That's where we are. Okay. Here's the secular bull market again from 2009. These are the cyclical bear markets inside. that have occurred mm -hmm. inside of that secular bull. Okay. 20% down, 15%, 21% down. Now COVID was 35%. That was dramatic. This one is right about 25%. Okay. And we're headed back up again. Mm. All right. <clears throat> this is from Tom Bally. He just put in 
a newsletter out today mm. showing all of the cyclical bear markets. So remember, these are cyclical bear markets. Yep. Cyclical means they are bear markets inside of a secular bull. Mm -hmm. Secular means long term. That means we are in a long term bull market. They usually last about 20 years. Mm. So we have another seven or eight years left. Okay. All right. Inside of that secular bull, there will always be times when the market comes back and corrects. Mm -hmm. Those are secular bear markets. Gotcha. All right. So he took those secular bear markets. These are all of them right here, back to 1957. Now, these are, these are bear markets inside of a secular bull. Mm -hmm. So there are other bear markets like uh, 2001 to 2009. Mm hmm Right. You don't see that in here. Right. Because that wasn't a. Secular. That was not a secular bull. That was right. a secular bear. Got it. All right. So these are cyclical bear markets. Inside of a long, oh. long term uptrend. Got these it. are these are corrections inside of a long term uptrend. Got it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. If you look at what's happened each time and we'll look at six months later, mm -hmm. here's the decline. 20 percent, 29, 28, 35. You know, here's the 2022 is 24 and a half percent. If you look at six months later, here's what the market did. Mm. On average, up 28% mm. in six months. All right? Mm -hmm. And one year later, on average, up 42%. After these cyclical bear markets. Got it. And what he said was, if I had to guess right now as to how much will rally in the one-year period from June 17th, which is the bottom, mm -hmm. I'd guess 40 to 50%, which would imply an S&P range of 5,000 wow. to 54.55 by mid-June next year. I believe we'll see it. I love Bally. He's making calls. I love people that reach out over their skis and make calls. He's a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. He's a, Yeah, like but, him. you know, look at this right here. I've done a lot of stock market research over the years he yeah. has done unbelievable research oh yeah he's he's the real uh, the, deal. you know the amount of work and effort that he puts into this kind of analysis is just amazing yep so yeah i have to i have to listen to him yeah i mean even course. if it's even if it doesn't get to 5500 even if it only gets to 5000 mm. that's still an all-time high yeah is an all-time high like 48 and change 48 uh 48 14 i think something like that okay yeah all right. So remember, we are in a secular bull market. Okay. Secular bull markets, recessions are shallow and short. Yeah. So yes, we may have a recession. I would say that it might be even be good to have a recession. Yeah, I would argue it's we have to have one. Right. So here's where we are right now. Here's the bottom in mm -hmm. June. We came up and we bounced across this little channel right here. Mm -hmm. I... Last week, I drew in the gap, which was down here around 3,800. We never hit that, and, and I don't think we're going to. I don't think we're okay. gonna, I don't think we're coming back to that. We actually came down to the top of this channel and took off. Okay. But notice this resistance line right here. That's what I'm worried about now. This is what I'm watching on Monday. 4,150, okay. 4,150 level. This goes back to the first, the 8.6% the CPI number yep. that we had. And we had this big drop right after that. Okay. That goes back to that high right there. So I think we're probably going to go there and all these buyers over here will, will take profits. Got it. Yeah. And how how long down. has that been? It's been two months. This is May. This is back in or May and June. So May back and June. Here. June. Yeah. So two, three months. Yeah. The profit of, yeah. take. Yep. Middle of May to the beginning of June. Okay. So this is what I'll be watching. I mean, it, we could break through it. If we break through it, I mean, it, it's nothing stopping us. We're just heading higher. But I'm, I, I think we're going to probably have profit taking next week. Yeah. Did so. Tell me how you felt Thursday and Friday, right? And basically, it had to all do with Powell's dovish comments. It had to. I mean, it just had to be Thursday and Friday. Basically, what Wall Street was saying is the Fed's going to stop. All this talk about the Fred being strong and going to, you know, terminal rate of three and a half and four percent, not happening. They're going to stop much sooner, i.e. September, and they're going to cut sooner. That's basically what Wall Street is saying. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I think that's what Wall Street is expecting. But I think they've I think they had 75 already built in. Oh, clearly. I mean, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah, clearly. So that wasn't a surprise. No, it was baked but, in. But what I was thinking on Thursday and Friday was 
this is what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're right. Well, yeah. yeah. But I was also thinking, so we've got a 9.1. I actually have the CPI numbers in this, these vertical lines. So yep. Here's the 8.6 yep. number here. Here's the 9.1 number here. 10 year treasury just continues to go down. It's now well below three. Yeah. I mean, mortgage rates are down over almost a point. It's down. It's below 2.7 even. Yeah. It's crazy. What I was thinking is this, this is just amazing. The stock market is amazing. Hmm. <clears throat> You've got a fed raising rates faster and higher than they've done in decades. Yeah. Back to backs never been done. Yeah. You have back to back GDP negative prints. Yep. You have, um, earnings that while some came in okay, not great, but reasonable. Yeah, you know, Apple did great. Yeah, last week after our after our session, we talked about that. I thought Apple would do good. Yeah, you did. Yep. And we'll look at some in the next uh, session. Um, Amazon did well, but you know, not great. Not great. They did not pretty great. well. Yeah. Uh, Meta missed big time. Mm -hmm. I thought would happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you had. Reasonable earnings, not great earnings, but not terrible earnings. Yeah. Let, let's say the earnings came in less bad. Yes, I'd say that's fair. Less bad. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And the market took off after yeah. all of those things. All yeah. of those things happening. Now, remember, all of those things are part of what? The economy. Economy. Exactly, Michael. Pay attention to Dan. And <laughs> stop looking at the economy. Think about the stock market. You're so right. 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 So the stock market just took off and never looked back. That's awesome. Um, this is this is my head and shoulders, and this I'm, I want to talk about this. This is really important too. Okay. So this is the call I made way back in February. I said, you know, we've got a shul left shoulder, head, right shoulder. I think based on technical analysis, the target is somewhere down here, and I've had that circle drawn in ever since February. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. This is where we went to. But look at what we've done now. We've got an inverse head and shoulders. Mm. So we have a left shoulder here. Yep. We have a head down here. Okay. We're coming back up to the neckline, that support area that I think we're going to probably get rejected up at. Mm -hmm. And then I want to watch to see if we come down to around this 3950 area. Okay. And put in a right shoulder. Okay. <clears throat> and if that happens, I'll actually show you something. That's in my newsletter, but I have a chart here for it too. So this um, this one on the left side is kind of the sentiment cycle. There's there's a lot of different you know people that have drawn this in the past. It's kind of the sentiment of how traders trade. You know the market goes up, you've got enthusiasm, mm -hmm. starts coming down. They, there's disbelief, and then you know keep buying the dip, disbelief, panic, and then suddenly discouragement, and everybody sells. Because they don't, they don't think it's ever going back up again, mm -hmm. right? And then it starts back up, and there's anxiety because people don't believe it, they don't trust it, they think it's going back down. It does go back down, then it goes up, breaks through, and heads to all time highs. Mm. All right. So this is just a sentiment cycle. This is every cycle. This isn't this one. It's just every cycle. They mm -hmm. all pretty much look like this. Mm -hmm. This is where I think we are right now. Everything in red is what I've added into these charts. Okay. So this is where I think we are right now. I think we're right in here. We're going to Test get rejected that. at this level. We're going to go back down and make a right shoulder. Okay. Now they didn't, they did not draw in this inverted head and shoulders on this chart, but it was so clear to me when I saw it. Yeah. I see what you're saying. An inverse, inverse head and shoulders. Yep. All right. So this is, this is where we are. This is the actual S and P right now. Yep. Again, everything in red is what I, I have drawn in. Okay. So we came down here, we bounced back up to almost 4,200 in May. Mm -hmm. We came all the way down. This was the low in June. This is where we are right now. Yep. All right. So now can you see the I can, potential yeah. for an inverted head and shoulders? Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah it makes this, perfect sense. So this is what I'm looking for. This yep. is what I'm looking at. I'm gonna, I am I want to see. I mean, we could just bust through this mm. and just head higher. But I think we're going to get some profit taking in this somewhere yeah. in this area. This, this actually, this is actually a little earlier. I don't know what the date was. This is seven twenty eight. So this doesn't include Friday. Friday we actually were actually up a little higher than this. Okay. All right. So what I think, what I actually would like to see happen, right, 
is for this to come back down around the 3950, 3900, 3950 level. Okay. And then start heading back up again. And if that happens, I think we bust through this. It just takes off. And we okay. head up to 4700, which is the target. Fun. Okay. So we'll see. Very cool. You know, we, we can go back and uh, revisit this. Yeah, of course. It's all recorded. You have your playlist. People should go back and watch hours and hours of us talking about the stock market. You make calls. Uh, people can go back and watch them. I just love the education. And this is what I was talking about before. Um, in, in addition to, you can't call a recession when you have four hundred thousand dollars, uh, four hundred thousand jobs a month yeah, exactly. being added. Yeah. Now this coming Friday is the next jobs number, so we'll we'll see. Yeah, I, I'm picking uh, about two hundred thousand, so still positive. But again, what about the what about the um, unemployment? unemployment? Uh, if it goes anywhere, it'll go just to three seven, just a, a minor tick up. Okay. So in that chart I showed before of the unemployment rate, a re recession doesn't begin until the unemployment rate starts going up. Correct. It doesn't begin when it's at this this level. Yeah, no. It usually not. begins about three months after it starts to increase. Correct. So if we see 3.7 or 3.8, then that could be the beginning, but Correct. we're still probably three, at least three months away. But here's the other thing that I said. You can't have a recession when the Fed is raising rates. The recession starts when the Fed pivots mm. and starts lowering rates. And here's the chart that proves that. Mm. So here's 2003, the Fed was raising rates. Suddenly they pivoted right here and started lowering rates about three months before the recession, wow. 2008. This is COVID right here. They're raising rates 2018. Then they pivoted, started lowering rates. Now this is, you know, a, more than a year before the recession. Yeah. But you look at all these recessions, you see where the Fed pivoted, where they yep. stopped raising, they stopped raising and they started lowering. Okay. That didn't happen during the recession. That happened three to six months before the recession. Interesting. This is the other reason why I say we are not in a recession right now. Hmm. Doesn't mean we're not headed towards a recession. Right. But I two understand. consecutive quarters of negative GDP does not define a yeah. recession. Yes, I've had that. Yes, I've right? had that out there. Yes. And in my newsletter, I spent some time on this. I, I did a few things that I said were controversial. Yeah. Here's an article from Bloomberg, Bloomberg Inflation Reduction Act has little inflation help. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's so ridiculous. Yeah. Do they really think most Americans don't understand that more spending leads to more inflation? Uh, probably most Americans don't believe that. Well, well, people that watch my channel, though, hopefully actually. I can educate some of them, at least yeah. the ones watching. There and then go. this down here, recession referees reject the idea that two GDP drops fell a downturn. Yeah. Yeah. It's it whether uh, what you're labeling the last two quarters is irrelevant. Uh, yeah. It is not going to be a technical definition of a recession. I brought that on my channel many times. I've tried to educate about the variables, the rule of thumb. The fact that it's happened before 1947, it doesn't matter. It's not an argument I want to entertain anymore. The, the economy is shrinking. I, I know it's 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 as I learned on LinkedIn, trying to have this, trying to educate people and having this argument. No, they want to make everything political, and believe me, I, yeah, they, I'm, they people are keep. I'm, try, I'm trying to explain to them all this. This is the MBR's definition of recession. Recession yeah. is a significant decline in activity spread across the economy, lasting more than a few months, visible in industrial production, employment, yeah. real income, which is going up. And wholesale retail trade. I've that tried to bring a, that up many times. Yeah. Exactly. There is no mention of two consecutive quarters of declining GDP. Yeah. It's all right. Well, that, uh, rule, of thumb, that rule of thumb is for people that don't understand how the economy and the stock market works. And yeah. it's just easy, easy way for people to think about it. Yeah. I have an economics degree. I understand all the different data points that go into it. It's a very, the economy is a complex beast. Lots of times we try to make things rule of thumb. And rule the thumbs aren't always perfect. It's just right. not how it works. So, so newsletter, newsletter one newsletter. more time. If yep. anyone yep. wants to uh, receive it, send me a note to breakpointtrading at gmail.com. Um, this, is, this is from last week's newsletter where I showed the August market mm -hmm. performance. Yep. And you can see in the beginning of August, the blue one is the NASDAQ. Mm. So... Gotcha. That's technology. You can see the beginning of August, uh, the market in general trends down. Yeah. Okay. 
And then after options expiration on the 19th, it starts to trend up again. Very cool. And the next CPI number is on the 10th, I think. It is the 10th, I believe. Yep. Right. So that's going to be somewhere before here. Now, if we get if we get a, a GDP, a, a, a CPI number higher. Yeah. Let's say we get one at 9.2. Ooh. Or even it stays at 9.1. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. what, what'll happen then? We could get a big, we could get a big sell off. Oh, I think you will get a big sell off initially. Yeah. 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 Again, I think the market, the market is very set up for basically what you're calling for, right? We're going to, that there's a pause in September. They're not going to get as high as they're talking. The Fed's going to pivot early. That's what the market is set up for. If right. we get a, if we get a nine, two or a right. nine, three. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that won't be a good day. Yeah. But there's one more before the next Fed meeting. Oh, I don't care. It won't matter. We get a nine three in the next meeting. We do not have a trend. It's still the trend is so, up. It so, won't matter. So do you so do you think they raise before the next meeting? Uh first off, Powell is a wimp, so I don't think they will. Should they? Absolutely. Yes. So I don't think he would. No. I don't think he will either. And I, I actually don't think that he should. Even if we got a nine three. Even if we got a nine three. Okay. Because inflation is going down. I mean, you look at the ten-year yield; it's telling you that. Well, again, let's play that out, right? If the if the CPI on the tenth comes out at nine three, this the ten-year uh, yield will not be two point seven. That no, will go. it will it will go up. But then the thing to watch is will it stay there? That's a different question. Will it start yes. to drift down after that, like it did, like it did uh, after the eight point six number. So you're so you're thinking uh, we're going to get a lower print, something lower than nine one. Yeah. Are you in the eights? I think we I think we could get below eight three. What? In one month? Right. Wow. So gasoline would help you. Gasoline is a large component. Gasoline large, and uh food. Is food going. food's a little early. Maybe. It's a little early though. No, it is Maybe. it is a little early, that's true, because even though even though the um commodities, food commodities have fallen off a cliff, literally just Yeah, you know, they have, but it's not it's not that fast. That doesn't that doesn't show up in the grocery stores for a while. J not just yet. That's a little early. But yeah, yeah gas but, is but helpful. That's still, but that's still what one of the things that the Fed looks at. Oh, no question. But that, that will they'll see that too. And so they, eight, they're not three. Going, I don't think they're going to react. No, you're quickly. right. No, of course. You're right. All right. So you're thinking eight three? I'll take the over. <laughs> that's an easy one call for me. <laughs> All right. We'll see. There you go. Well, Dan, thank you very much. I look forward to our next episode where we are going to look at some earnings and or some charts about stocks and whatnot. We haven't done this in a while. Thank you for the education. You have once again reminded me why I suck at stock investing because I am too damn focused on the economy. Uh, I appreciate the reminder. Thanks, brother. Market is not the economy. I remember now. Just keep reminding <laughs> me. Keep reminding me every every week. I need the help. Thanks, brother. All right.